Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. I want to talk about a perverse effect of the Rolex craze of the moment, which is, can you still even wear your brand new Rolex? You might have seen uh, YouTube guys talking about uh, how their watches have appreciated and how now they keep them in a safe at the bank uh, because they're just uh, afraid of uh, wearing them. The thing is, for many normal guys, you know, like me, buying a Rolex Submariner, for example, is a is a big purchase. One of the biggest purchases we make, you know, after uh, a car, uh, usually. And so, it's bad enough uh, as it is. But if on top of it, the watches have become very hard to find. Uh, collectible um, and I have appreciated in, in price you start thinking twice now about wearing a watch which is a bit crazy for what is normally a, a simple tool watch um, so it was funny the other day I was having dinner with a couple of friends and everybody had an interesting watch on the wrist I had my uh, my moon watch uh, Speedmaster uh, which has not appreciated in price because they make so many of them uh, and yet it's probably one of the most iconic watches uh, ever made which is why it's such a great purchase great first luxury purchase for many people and, I, and I'm never afraid of wearing it and, uh, and enjoying it and another friend of mine if he's listening it's uh, Z, the Z Dog he was uh, wearing his uh, Daytona white face steel bezel he got it uh, Many years ago, he got a call from uh, the authorized dealer here in uh, Hong Kong. Went to get it, and that's his only watch. He wears it every day, everywhere. Uh, and even, even him now, you know, he's sort of joking about it, uh, saying, uh, what would you give me for, for it, you know? He's like scanning the market. And I'm like, why would you ever sell that unless you really need the, the money? Uh, and you see how money twists, is twisting people's mind, you know? You start, you have a great watch that you love, that you have all your memories uh, with. He's been everywhere around the world with that watch. And uh, I don't know if he's joking or not, but it would be a pity to let it go to someone else and uh, lose a part of, uh, of yourself, really, um, of, your, of your memories. This watch has been uh, timing uh, the, the rhythm of his life, you could say. And then uh, another friend, Ben, he might be listening, I think, uh, I hooked him up on the, well, he got hooked himself on the, on watches, so we talk about it a lot. And uh, he had a current ceramic Submariner on, so, and I, and I put it on my wrist again. And I gotta say, I'm doing a total 180 degree turn uh, on that watch. I had a chance to buy it last year in the, in the summer, back in, uh, in Germany, visiting a small town in Germany. And I didn't, because at that point, I had never spent more than four, four and a half grand on a watch. So it was a big purchase and I didn't really love the, the large lugs. So, and I was thinking, okay, next Basel World, if they come up with a, a thinner design uh, for, the, for the lugs and they put in the, the new movement, this model is not gonna keep value, uh, at least not, not to me, you know, you also have to decide for yourself what you think is, is worth uh, purchasing. And so I didn't buy it, I pushed it out, you could say uh, I should have and, and now I really love it I, I think it's an interesting look though those lugs uh, and I actually prefer it to the more vintage ones with the thinner lugs uh, I'm looking at the Yachtmaster the Yachtmaster uh, only a block to watch have reported it but this year at Basel World they have introduced the uh, new movement the three uh, three, two, three, five. Uh, so 70 hours of power reserve and, uh, and whatever other uh, improvements. Uh, many, many improvements actually. I think 10 or 14 patents on that new movement alone. Uh, so they have introduced that uh, into the Yachtmaster, you know, the, the fancy Submariner. Uh, but the Yachtmaster, it's interesting, doesn't have those big lugs. So they haven't given it the super case. So it's still a very elegant, uh, sporty kind of watch. Just, just to say, uh, to stay above the waves on your on your yacht and uh, sometimes jump in the in the water. Uh, the two-tone with chocolate dial is really nice. It's a 14 grand watch, and at 11 grand, 
you can get uh, the steel one with a beautiful blue dial uh, with the red letters on it and, uh, and platinum. I think a lot of people are looking at it. Well, I'm saying that, but in Hong Kong, you can't even find those. Um, and I'm getting interested in it because it has the, the new movement now, something nobody has picked up on. Too busy we were complaining about the releases from uh, Rolex this year. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing my uh, Explorer. That's, that's my, uh, that's my uh, weekend watch. I just love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. It's a perfect watch for traveling for the weekend. Uh, and so, yeah, the, those Yacht Masters, uh, everybody, nobody picked up on it. So now it's very interesting because given the prices of the, uh, that the steel models are going for, you can almost get a platinum or two-tone gold watch with the thinner lugs, with the new movement, uh, for the same price. I mean, for 11 grand, you, you get the, uh, the, the uh, platinum uh, bezel. Uh, and I think that's really cool, right? And so, yeah, so I was talking, uh, so, so Ben was uh, showing me his Submariner. And uh, I really like it. And obviously, uh, I think Rolex, I mean, at some point, they're gonna have to uh, redesign it and put the new movement in it. Yeah, I'm now nah, desire it because the price is still, uh, it's still very decent. Uh, if you can get it at the, the AD, which of course at the moment is, is very difficult. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, in Hong Kong, you know, watch Mecca, you just can't find those watches. You can't even find the Tudor Black Bay. There's no Black Bay uh, in Central at the, the AD's. Uh, but you can find them on the secondary market at a reasonable price. And, um, yeah, and so Ben just bought a, a Seiko Samurai, which I love, you know, I love my Samurai, I told him it's great design, if you're gonna have one Seiko Diver, that's one of the, the great choices. But at the same time, I was wondering, why would you, would you, it's not a lot of money, of course, of course like $400, uh, $400, but why would you bother just wear your, your Rolex? But I understand it, you know, if I, if I really go diving, if I go to the beach, I'm not going to wear a watch with, which has gold in the dial, uh, in the indices and uh, has become so valuable. So that's his daily driver at the office. It's still pretty stealth, you know, it, it does the job for everything. And uh, if need be, of course, you can take it on holiday and to the beach. But I'm guessing the samurai comes into play there uh, for something that can be banged around. So you see how you're losing a bit the purpose of the of those watches. I don't know how I would feel uh, about uh, getting a call from the AD saying, "Okay, you can get a, a sub." Oh, imagine you can get a, a Hulk. That's not going to happen, you know. I don't have any game uh, with the AD, but uh, imagine you do find a, a Hulk. So, the, so the green Submariner. Well, it's what eight grand watch, and now trading uh, at 11, 12 grand. I mean. It's, even more, I think I've seen some price at 14. I don't really know who's really paying that. Uh, but I, the interest of the, the Hulk is that a lot of watches are just black or white dials or blue dials. So it brings another color in your collection. At the same time, you get a Submariner. So that's why it's interesting for many people to have it in their, in their collection. It's a great addition of color. I totally understand it. And, uh, it's, it's why I would love to, to have one. But then at those prices, guess what? You can get the two-tone. Two-tone is back in fashion, don't forget it. Uh, and these are the next ones to uh, go up in value. Well, if you're gonna pay, uh, what is it, 100,000 Hong, Hong Kong dollars, so like 14 grand uh, for, let's say, uh, for, for a Hulk. Well, you can get the two-tone Submariner, the bluesy or the black dial for the, the same price. You can get, a uh, slightly used Daytona. A Daytona, yes, two-tone. So a Daytona with gold for cheaper than the steel Daytona. So you get gold for free <laughs> in, the, in this, uh, in, in this mad, uh, madness. Um, and it's, it's quite an interesting proposition because if I could get a two-tone, if I would buy a two-tone Daytona, I, I would wear it. I'd go for it. Uh, Knowing it's it's used, maybe a couple of scratches on it. I guess I'd go for it. Um, so yeah, what I was trying to say is that uh, I find it sad when uh, when I see that 
one of that YouTuber saying, oh, I don't dare wearing my Kermit because now it's tripled in price uh, and I'm gonna sell it. I mean, you should, the whole point of getting the watch early on or getting the call from the AD is that you have it. You have it. And I've had the same thing with, uh, with guitars that were hard to find and I managed to get good deals in Japan um, and then managed, you know, if I love the guitar, I'm going to play it and keep it. If I don't love it, yeah, I'll flip it and, uh, and make a handsome profit. I did it on, uh, on the guitar for those who like ZZ Top. It was a copy of the uh, ZZ, ZZ Top uh, guitarist guitar called uh, Pearly Gates. I, I flipped it at double, uh, the, double the price. And, uh, but that's because I didn't like the, the guitar, it didn't play well. Uh, I ordered it and it came and I didn't like it. But it looked beautiful and uh, someone paid the price, uh, paid the price for it. So everything is a bit distorted like this. Uh, we're not enjoying things for what they are, but just for the uh, perception uh, of what everybody uh, ha has of it. And, uh, but I think if you, have a, a sub, if you have a Hulk and if you didn't pay to the roof uh, for it, well then, you, you've made it. You gotta enjoy it and uh, put miles into them and uh, not think about it money. Um, I know it's hard if it's your most expensive watch or one of your most too expensive uh, watches. Uh, but, you know, when you look at your wrist, uh, do you prefer, do you want to see a Seiko or do you want to see a Rolex? Uh, personally, I love my Seikos, but now they've become the watches that I don't wear. What I want to see on my wrist every day is a, is, is a Rolex uh, because uh, I enjoy it more. Uh, I think it's cool, I love the design. And most importantly, they, they feel better. Yesterday I was wearing my Seiko uh, Sumo, the green one. I uh, hadn't worn it a while and, uh, and, uh, and I was really enjoying it, but I realized it was giving me a bit of irritation. It's kind of heavy, uh, the bracelet is not, it's a different steel. Um, and yeah, no, somehow I never get any, I never get bothered wearing uh, my, uh, this old Rolex. Yeah, speaking of old versus new, this is all with the old class, thinner lugs. Uh, but but it's got a, it's got a, it keeps a modern feel. I think it's really a gem, this one, and uh, it's appreciating now in value. A lot of people are getting into it. Uh, it has got a, it's still got a modern vibe, unlike uh, some of the old submariners. You really have to be into the vintage thing. Another YouTuber, uh, what's his name? The, uh, um, yeah, in, in America. Um, Anyway, he was talking, just talking about it, saying he prefers the modern Rolexes, and, uh, and I am totally, I totally agree. Uh, I want to have on my next watch the Glide Lock uh, because I use that a lot. I use the flip lock, flip lock a lot on my Explorer One uh, because in Hong Kong it's just so hot outside and so cold inside with the aircon. Yeah, you gotta have it. In Belgium, it wouldn't really make a difference, I think. And usually with this one, I don't really have... I managed to size it just perfectly. Uh, even, it doesn't get irritating. But I do get, uh, not only that, the convenience of the, the glide lock, but also, uh, you know, the, the current steel that they use. And the, um, the look, the overall look, you know, the larger lugs, the maxi case. Totally get why, uh, and I'm getting into it a lot right now, uh, as I'm considering, as I said, a two-tone uh, Daytona. Even the six-digit reference still has this kind of old look, and uh, like the Yacht Masters as well. You know, they keep that, those thin lugs, uh, a bit more like the the Datejust. You know, when you try on a, a current Datejust with a Jubilee, for example, it, it kind of feels like an old man's watch, doesn't it? Uh, so I do get the interest of the uh, the sub and the, the GMTs, uh, and they're, they're super popular. People people love it. People love this new look. Uh, but yeah, when you get the call, what do you do? Do you wear it or not? Uh, I think if you have uh, two Pateks in your collection, and uh, that's my son right there. Uh, I guess if you have two Pateks or longer in your collection, then the Rolex is your your beater. And, uh, and that's okay, but if the Rolex is your number one watch, then I think you got a problem at the, at the moment if uh, you get your head turned on by, uh, by money. 
Uh, there was an interesting video in, uh, by a guy in Singapore who just got the call after two years that his Hulk was there. And uh, his wife had to chip in to, uh, to, uh, to help him buy the watch. And looking at his collection, that's his most expensive watch, clearly. Uh, so, so what? It's a tool watch. It's green, you know, very, uh, very, very sporty, very cool, relaxed watch. And now it's his most luxurious watch. Is he going to wear it? Is he going to think about flipping it every day? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you decide, you be the judge. Uh, I think it's a uh, good option is to go with, uh, with one of uh, these explorers. They come with a few scratches, so you don't have to worry about uh, adding more. And uh, to be honest, I'm less precious with this. I have it wear it on the weekend than uh, with my Rolex Explorer. You know, it's a $6,000 watch. I think it's the most expensive after the watch of my wife, uh, which I'm going to talk about uh, in the, in the next video, I got her a very nice watch in, uh, in Japan, second hand, but still more money than this, twice more money than this. Uh, I gotta say, I wear my Explorer 1 during the week at the office, but for the weekend, uh, I don't want to have it around the kids, because I don't, I don't want to scratch it. And uh, there you go, back to my point. Uh, it's made to go exploring, and uh, all I explore is uh, the stock markets at the, at the office. Um, so, yeah. Money, 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 uh, Rolex is great, but you're gonna have a, a lot of money to really be able to enjoy them fully and not, you know, pussy out, uh, right, Adrian, uh, at the value of, uh, uh, of the watch that you were lucky enough to buy early on or, or to buy at the, the AD. All right, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll speak to you very soon. I'm going to present to you my most expensive watch, which is not for me, it was for my wife. I got it in, uh, in Japan, in Shibuya, uh, which is the coolest place, I think, in, uh, in Tokyo. And uh, a very cool watch. It's actually a man's watch, but I uh, hope one day she will let me uh, resize the bracelet so I can wear it. All right, speak to you soon. Ciao.